everyone this is Carrie Beck with homeschool coffee break helping you gain confidence and know you're doing the right activity so you can go take a coffee break today hey today we are talking about uh, how you can steal one of my many learning strategies for a quick homeschool boost especially if you're listening to me as we publish it we're heading into summer but even if you're listening to me a year from now or half a year from now this strategy can work no matter what time of year it is so what I want to do is talk to you about the educational strategy of games now you may be going I don't know about that Carrie Um, because you're like I'll lose control if I let my kids start to play games but let me just tell you I have found that my kids have learned more about uh, whatever the topic is when we are actually playing games and so what I want to do is what we're going to talk about the benefits of games even some of them aren't even like educational We're going to talk about some store-bought games, some homemade games, and some games on the fly that you can do. So let's dig in. Why games? Why would that be a learning strategy that could give your homeschool a boost? Let me just tell you. The benefit of games increases our kids' motivation. I don't know about you, but my son, Hunter, if it was a game, he would learn learn anything, even things he didn't care about. It increases their overall motivation to learn, to pay attention, and then to participate in the actual learning activities. Let me just show you a game. I have so many, and I'm probably going to back and forth fall over or something. This game right here is the fine art game. I bought this in Nashville. It was... um, I mean, Hunter was about, I don't know, eight or nine years old. He did not like fine arts. When we went to the Fine Arts Museum of Houston the two years before that, he was like, oh, no, not this museum. But I bought this. We had gone and we had wandered through the remake of the Parthenon. The Parthenon is a building over in Greece, and they have made a replica of it. I mean, like life-size replica in Nashville. We were in the gift store, and I decided I wanted to buy this game. Well, let me tell you, on the way home from Nashville to Texas, we played this game the whole way home. Hunter wanted to learn, wanted to win that game so badly, he learned every piece of art in the game because he wanted to win. Do you have a child that can relate to this? I bet you do. Whenever I talk about this, I have moms like, oh, my boys, they are so competitive. They will do anything to win. I will tell you the other thing that I think is sort of funny. This has nothing to do with educational games, but Hunter would be outside um, playing basketball with the girls, and it's time for lunch. He's like, oh, we're not done. When we After lunch, we're coming back because he wasn't winning, and he wanted to make sure that he won. And having said that, I thought, you can even use outside basketball as a game. You know, like you um, shoot the free throws or there's H-O-R-S-E. You could relate that, and the only way they could get their letters to spell out the word horse is one to answer a question, and then they take the shot. So that would be a fun way. I didn't really ever think about that. Okay, it uh, games increase motivation. They tap into the competitiveness, especially of boys. They increase a child's memory capacity. As they are trying to win the game, they're trying to remember all the things that they need to do. I'm going to show you some games, all right? It increases strategic thinking and problem solving, which is the basis of critical thinking skills. There are so many thinking skill type games. It also enhances our kids to truly focus, focus on whatever the topic is. So what I'm going to do the rest of the times, I'm going to show you games that you could buy, games you can make, and games you could do on the fly. So let me put the art game away, and we'll start with this little stack. We'll just start with a very simple one. It's just a card game. It's scientist, and you would maybe have to collect all four. Let me just show you what one of these looks like. Um, so here we have a scientist. This is... Copernicus explained retrograde motion of planets. Let's see. And here's another one. Anyway, you could have to collect them. And in order to keep them, you may have to actually tell 
some sort of fact about that particular art um, scientist. They have authors, they have all different ways, and they have different levels of games that you could play. Simple, little, you could take this in the car. It's so easy to use. This is Quick Picks. I love this game because you are competing against other people. I will show you how it works. This one happens to be the animal game. And so we may have penguin and you have to match it either with another bird or here's gorilla that isn't going to match. You are working on animal kingdoms. And so that would be something fun that you can do with this one. Quick Picks. Next we have Hive Alive. This is actually a math game. There is a math, a, bee, a beehive board. There are 12 queen bees, and they have, you will cover um, inequalities, fractions, decimals, negative numbers, and place value. So a lot of times we think math games are all just add, subtract, basic. That is one that was going to go further and further. Here is one. You may even actually have this, because they probably sell this at Barnes & Noble. Apples to apples. My kids, our whole family love this game. But what a great vocabulary building game and a critical thinking game that they could actually work on. So that is a popular game as well. Um, Monopoly. I didn't bring the Monopoly. We actually have Aggieopoly because Texas A&M Aggies are just a mile away. But what a great game to learn about entrepreneurship and money and finances and economics. Here's another game called Constellation, and it's a race um, that you are going to race through space. There are actually three levels that you can play this particular game. We've already done the scientist one. And then we have the way things work. And in order to win the game, you've got to be able to do this. I'm going to show you the back. You can see you, they are going to be putting things together. This would be a great physics game for your kids to play. All right, so those are the ones here. I got a few more. Um, let me grab them. And these are all board games. Another game that my kids, well, our whole family likes is categories. Is it categories? Yes, where you get a letter and then you have to think of words that start with that letter. Again, great vocabulary building. That is like sold probably on Amazon. All right, even my grandkids, my grandgirls like this, the older ones. It's called Top Dog. I think this was Gentry's game. I don't know, but you, there are different levels and you're going around the board and, you know, there's obedience training and everything, but there are different levels. And according to, you know, how deep you want to go into the alpha dog and the different types of dogs, um, you would get your different groups and win that way. Here is another one that we have played. This is a critical thinking game. Don't bug me, and they are trying to build a garden. The problem is if you land on certain ones, you lose your uh, flowers and seeds. Other ones, you actually get to grow the seeds. Now, I will tell you right now, this is this was Ashley's favorite game as a child. Made for trade. She loved history, and she loved playing this game. And I've played this also with the grandkids as well. And they are living in a colonial town. The whole board is a colonial town. And you're going to different places like the apothecary or the church or the silversmith or wherever in order to be able to win this game. And then the last game, I think this is the last game, I want to show you is another game that is still popular today. It is a thinking skills game. Guess who? You know, we had this game, and my kids loved it. But I remember coming home from a date with Steve, and the babysitters, they were two sisters, they decided to come together. They were playing Guess Who? It is all ages. Um, Gentry gave Faith, our oldest granddaughter, this game a year ago for Christmas, and you would have thought she had given her a million dollars. She got that, open it, and she is grabbing it. She's like, oh, yay, yay, yay. She doesn't even know all the thinking skills, critical thinking, problem solving, how she's deducing who is the person that um, the other person has. And so you are working on um, a lot of critical thinking and problem solving skills. All right. Those are pre-made games. Where's my bag? Okay. We're going to start with this. These are some handmade games. If you are listening in the springtime to this, we have just finished Easter and... Plastic eggs are probably still in the store on sale. There are so many games. I'm going to just show you a few of them. You could take your plastic eggs and have your kids match it for rhyming words. There's one. Oh, that's not it. That's the only one in this. You could also have them match. 
well, this isn't going to show you very closely, capital, let's see if I can get this thing to work, capital and lowercase, oh, there you go, you can sort of see it, um, you can also get, here's one, you can draw a clock on it, and actually, let's get it away from all that light, there you go, clock, and then you would put the time on the other half, and they would have to match it as well. Another thing you could do is just put all the alphabet letters, and your kids have to say, I would do more than just 26, but let's say they have 50 eggs with different letters, and they take their spelling test with the Easter eggs. Would that not be fun? That would be a lot more fun than just sitting and listening and writing it. There's a place for that as well. You could do match. You know, there's so many Easter egg games you could do. You could fractions and percent, and you match them. Spelling tests, compound words. Like, um, can't even think of one. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe I can't. Rooftop. And they would have to put the two together to make a compound word. They could count by twos or fives. And they'd take their egg tray and they put their eggs in. You'd have a bunch of numbers and they would put them in order for twos or fives or tens or whatever you want them to do. You could have your kids sort the eggs by color for lower kids. Some other homemade games you could do are some memory games. One of my favorite ones that we've done um, with kids as far as Bible and um, vacation Bible school is the balloon memory game. And what you would do is take your memory verse and you'd print it out and put little, um, cut out little sections of it so all the words were included and all the words were stuffed inside a balloon. You blow it up and tie it. The kids have to pop the balloon, get the little piece of paper out, and then put all the pieces of paper in the right order. We've done that with teams, and then you've got teams against each other. If you do this with teams, I have a little hint for you. Put all of one team's uh, pieces in one color, like red, and then another team is all yellow, and another team is all blue. That way, when you bring them out, and you may lose one here or there, you'll know, hey, if we give all of the red ones to this team, we know they get all the pieces to that memory verse. And it could be other things as well. Legos, you could do the same thing. You could write on the Legos and they have to put the memory verse in order. Or you could do times tables and they have to put the times tables and put one times five equals five or seven times three equals 21. And they have to stack it up and it would all work together. Dominoes, same thing. You could write them. If you don't want to mess your dominoes up or your Legos, just put masking tape on it. So here, what are some things you could do with dominoes? Um, and I'm telling you, all you do is add a little bit of competitiveness and your kids become a lot more motivated to learn whatever it is. You could do states and capitals. You could do math facts. You could do geometric shapes and match them to the names. You could do parts of speech. You could do Legos, parts of speech, and you could have a section, and then they have to find the Legos and see which um, part of speech builds the tallest tower. Those are just some handmade games, but let's talk about on-the-fly games, and I don't even have my um, pen. Maybe I do. No. Okay, I won't. I was going to get this whiteboard out, but I don't really have it here ready, so what you could do just play tic-tac-toe. And I would just get a whiteboard like this and put a tic-tac-toe. And if you have two kids, it's X's versus O's. If you have more kids, you have two teams. They must answer the review question to be able to put their X or O. Whatever topic, it could be the Middle Ages and whatever you've been studying. It could be human body and the body systems. No matter what you are studying, you could play a tic-tac-toe game just by asking review questions. So that would be one thing. Hangman, same thing. In order to put another person on and hang that man, they must answer a review question. Any topic that you want to use. Baseball. Now, this is a fun one, and this is like on the fly. Here's what you need for your baseball game. You would need four chairs. Home plate, first, second, and third. And you would have two teams, and they would have to answer questions correctly. Now, the, the, you could just say they always get a single, and they move around until they actually get this. Or you could cut out some little cards, and on the cards, single, double, triple, home run. Um, so, and I would have a lot of singles, and then not as many of the rest of them. They answer a question correctly. They pick up a card, and if it says double, they they physically go and sit at the second base chair. 
and then maybe the next person hits a triple or a home run. That means they push them all the way home. But they always have to answer their question correctly. If they miss a question, that is a strike. Three strikes, you're out, and the other team gets a chance. All right? So that would be a really fun way. I played that as a kid in Sunday school. We would have teams, and they would ask questions, and we would move around the classroom. It was so much fun. Okay, so you're probably going, okay, what are you talking about? That is my mini learning strategy. Just add games and competitiveness to whatever you are doing, and I will almost guarantee you will have a quick homeschool boost. Now, that is my secret sauce. That is my homeschool secret sauce, is adding games and fun to homeschool to make it even better. What's your homeschool secret sauce? Seriously, I have a quiz for you. It is takes less than one minute. I will put the, um, put the link on it in just a minute and let you see what it is. But you can go in, answer these few little questions, and you will find out what your secret sauce is and how you can improve your homeschool and give your homeschool a boost with your secret sauce. Why not take that quiz? The other thing I want to offer you is I have an ebook. It normally sells for $10. It's called Teaching Kids with Easy to Use Games. It is on sale today and tomorrow only for $4. That means, yes, a 60% discount. And I will put the link in it. This ends tomorrow night. So I know if you're listening to this later, that may not happen. But if you are listening to it quickly, then you can actually get the Teaching Kids with easy to use games. But no matter what, you could always take our quiz, find out what's your homeschool secret sauce and how you can improve and give your homeschool a homeschool boost. All right, I am Carrie back with Homeschool Coffee Break. Thanks for spending time with me. Oh, I forgot a couple things. Number one, if you are listening uh, somewhere here on the web, be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening. Just click that little subscribe button. Number two, if you can leave a comment and let me know what game you want to play or just one of these games that you think your kids would like and it would give your kids your homeschool a boost, leave that as in the comment section or as a review as well. Hey, I'm Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break. Y'all have a good day.